In this video, we'll reveal the demands of the 21st century in terms of the necessary value-added skills students will need to compete in our economy. We'll look at practical and cost-effective solutions for schools and teachers to utilize to begin the transformation to 21st century teaching. We'll visit with Harvard professor Dr. Chris Didi and technology consultant John Kuglin. We'll take a look at technologies that are changing education and providing tools for new learning. The National Education Technology Plan emphasizes unprecedented opportunities for connected learning powered by technology. The plan outlines the need for 21st century competencies such as critical thinking, complex problem solving, collaboration, and multimedia communication to be woven into all content areas. It also acknowledges current teaching practices as occurring in isolation and describes teacher professional development opportunities as short, fragmented, and episodic workshops that offer little opportunity to integrate learning into practice. In contrast, the National Education Technology Plan offers the notion that effective teaching in the 21st century requires innovation, problem solving, creativity, continuous improvement, research, diagnostic use of data, and flexible and personalized approaches to meeting students' diverse needs and strengths. Our global society calls for a new set of skills, collaboration, critical thinking, communication, and the ability to innovate. How can distance education technologies help foster these skills among students? Well, 21st century skills is something that I think a lot about. And some skills have been with us for a long time, but they've changed in the 21st century. So collaboration now means not only collaborating face-to-face, -face, but collaborating halfway across the world in a virtual workspace with someone that you may never meet. Other skills are really unique to the 21st century. So information filtering, when I grew up, I had to try to find information using the Dewey Decimal System in the library. Today, you filter millions of hits trying to find the information that you want. So online learning is both adding new skills like inter information filtering and it's changing perennial skills like collaboration. The National Education Technology Plan calls for educators to be connected to their students and to professional content, resources, and systems that empower them to create, manage, and assess engaging and relevant learning experiences for students both in and outside school. They must be connected to resources and expertise that improve their own instructional practices and that guide them in becoming facilitators and collaborators in their students' increasingly self-directed learning. Unfortunately, little is provided in the area of support and technology tools for teachers, especially with continued budget cuts. Installing the latest software on classroom computers can be prohibitive for schools due to limited funding. Teachers are being asked to do more with less and are held more accountable than ever. With a sea of improvement between the what is and what should be, and with dwindling resources, there are solutions that schools and teachers can implement now to begin the transformation to 21st century teaching and learning. The solutions begin with leveraging the potential of cloud computing. Cloud computing uses the internet and remote servers to maintain data and applications. The essence of cloud computing is service. The highest level of cloud computing service is known as software as a service. With software as a service, both data and applications are stored in the cloud and applications are accessible through a thin client interface, such as a web browser. In a recent interview, consultant John Kuglin discusses his views on student learning and cloud computing. My work as a technology consultant uh, continues to grow in its role, but one of the biggest aspects and you don't probably want to, you don't hear this from a technology consultant very often, but it's more about learning than technology. It's really about student achievement. So as a technology, uh, as a technologist and as an educator, I'm always stressing the fact that it's technology second, it's learning first. 
And so the role is really understanding how technology, because it's kind of a cause and effect relationship. Because Apple released the iPad, and because there are so many apps now available for the iPad, the effect is now we have a new mobile platform for the classroom that, that many teachers are asking, well, how do I use this effectively to impact instruction? Take the last Consumer Electronics Show um, this January, this, this past January in Las Vegas. Uh, because Apple released the iPad and because the industry saw how well the iPad did, 53 devices, similar devices, were released wow. at, at the Consumer Electronics Show. So there's a combination of understanding the new technologies that are out there, new ways of delivering. Uh, we have uh, a national program on, much like Eisenhower did when he built the interstate highway system, much like the Lincoln administration did when he built the Transcontinental Railroad. Well, there's a push on now to, to continue to connect our country. Um, ubiquitously with wireless content. So you've got wireless content, you've got new mobile devices, and then you've got something called cloud computing. And so I put all of that together as a technology consultant and I, and I give solutions to school districts that say, here's how you can deploy this. And what's working, at least right now in my favor, is that you actually can do more on less money if you know what if you know how to put all these new uh, tools together and assemble them. And that's what schools are going to have to do because they're not going to get any more money. They're going to have to work smarter. And how does teacher professional development fit into all this? Well, the key to professional development, uh, I'll go back in time because I can do that with my age. When, when computers first started to come out, Apple IIEs in, in the schools, there were actually policies and procedures that said the teachers were not to use the computers. They would immediately go to the students for use. Well, they sat there as doorstops and so forth because if sure. the teacher didn't feel comfortable with it and, and the teacher wasn't going to use it, the students certainly weren't going to use that. So we've come a long way uh, in, in some respects uh, to, to get computers in the hands of teachers and students. And uh, so it, it, it grows and it continues to, uh, to evolve. That professional development is a key component. In fact, a, a great amount of my work is done with professional development and teaching teachers how to become 21st century teachers. We always talk about 21st century learning, but what does it mean to be a 21st century teacher? And I've been working with, with teachers all around the country, showing them the new applications that are online, increasing their productivity, and also working beyond their, their school district. Now, their school district is going to provide a cadre of technology tools, which I put in the middle. But students are out here, and in order to reach them, teachers have to work differently. So I'm showing them how to use the cloud, how to use technologies to reach all of those students. When schools are going to become more and more limited on what they can do, teachers themselves can actually do more if they know how to work, and professional development is the key to that. There are many advantages to cloud computing. With cloud computing, multiple copies of software applications do not need to be installed on various computers throughout the school. The software applications are available through the internet and therefore all that is needed is a computer or mobile device with an internet connection. Documents created in the cloud are usually saved on the software provider's server and therefore can be accessed by other computers from any location. In most cases, the creator of a document has the option to share access with other users, with the potential for several users to work simultaneously on the same document. Cloud computing is cost effective with many of the applications provided at no cost and others paid for on a subscription basis. Because applications and the data are stored on the web, they can be accessed with smaller and less expensive devices than ever before. Opportunities for distance learning and collaboration as an extension to face-to-face -face learning can add an additional dimension to learning and supportive 21st century skills, as well as to provide greater depth in learning. Software available in the cloud include a variety of productivity tools that engage students in the learning process and provide a platform for experiences that transcend classroom walls. Cloud computing can serve to foster student and professional learning. The most known cloud applications is Google Apps Education Edition, a free suite of hosted communication and collaboration applications designed for schools and universities. Software applications available in the cloud offer powerful communication, collaboration, 
and productivity tools that can be accessed from any browser. Many cloud applications are designed around open industry standards that are compatible with a variety of educational platforms such as the Commercial Course Management System, Blackboard, and the Open Source Course Management System, Moodle. Today, many educational organizations have adopted cloud computing models. For example, MIT's Climate Modeling Initiative looks at a way to use cloud computing resources to perform scientific research in university labs and K-12 classrooms. A partnership between the New York City Department of Education, Columbia University, and the Columbia Secondary School has led to the deployment of cloud-based systems for schools. A project supported by HP Innovations in Education grant connects students with scientific researchers, giving them an opportunity to experience professional research practices while also building their own technical skills. From planning tools to presentation and creativity tools, cloud applications can help facilitate 21st century learning. I'm Cindy Burfield. Thank you for watching.